Uh, let's move on to some NBA news. Uh, we found out a few weeks ago that the officials had to be all vaccinated, but now it comes down that the players will not. It will not be mandated for the players to be vaccinated. You and I have spoken back and forth on a trip. I, we both understand it's a business, but you got to believe that the, the Players Association fought hard to make sure everyone didn't have to be vaccinated. Yeah. Okay, so my thing is, which I'm a little bit confused about, so the players don't have to be vaccinated, but the New York teams and uh, the, the Warriors will still have to be vaccinated or they can't play home games. So I'm, I'm a little confused on how this is going to all play out. Yeah, I, th I think there's going to be a lot of confusion, as you mentioned, because certain states are going to mandate that you have to be vaccinated. Yeah. Um, and as you mentioned, we're just using New York and, and San Francisco as an example. But I think as we get closer to the season, we may start hearing more of like, hey, look, if you want to play in this state, you have to be because we've already heard the mandates for fans. Right. Especially in New York, fans have to be vaccinated and officials have to be vaccinated. And so at, at that point. I don't see how it again in, in New York. I know the players have to be, but how is this all going to play out in Boston? How is this going to play out in DC? You know what I'm saying? In other areas, if the league isn't mandating it, um, it it's going to get tricky. But ultimately, you know, it is a business. I know they got to do what's in the best interest of that business. It just kind kind of contradicts some of the other things that are going on. Yeah. So we have to wait. So we got we got we got a couple of. Uh... Uh, more weeks before the season starts back up so we'll, we'll 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 keep you guys posted yes sir we we gotta wait on that um some other news uh one of the best news i've heard from the lakers looks like lebron james is willing to play the four anthony davis willing to play the five i'm already on record as saying that's going to be their best lineup with those guys at those positions and then surrounded by shooters i know you're excited about it as well because braun already is a point forward now he'll just carry that over to the four position yeah and and, and i mean LeBron plays every position, but he's played the four before. He's played the four in, in Cleveland. Um, so this is not anything new to him. I think the bigger deal is Anthony Davis willing to sacrifice and play the five. You know, I know he didn't, you know, there's, there was always the talk of him not wanting to play the, the center position. But the fact that he's agreed and, and, and he's embracing that role it, it speaks volumes and it shows that he's willing to do what it takes for the Lakers to not only get back to the finals, but win another NBA championship with LeBron and AD as the two main guys uh, on the roster. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, who they're actually going to start at the three is what I'm wondering. Cause now I'm, you know, does that mean they're going to put Melo in at three or is Melo still going to come off the bench? Is it going to be a reason? Melo comes off the bench. Um, yeah, they, they'll probably go with like a little more defense at the three. I think Melo will come off the bench. Melo may close games yes. at the three, but to start games, they probably go with a little more defense at the three. Yeah. So either way, I love it. I'm waiting for the NBA. Um, I've been playing 2K. My play is going crazy right now, so I'm, I'm excited for the NBA season uh, to come back around. Yes, sir. Um, Rockets and John Wall work, working on a trade to get them out of there. We kind of saw this coming. Um, when they traded for him, it was really to get rid of Westbrook's contract. They know it's not working. They're going very young. Still owed a lot of, a lot of money. I think it's about $92 million yeah. over the next three years, something like that, two years. So it's going to be tough to move them, but they're trying to move them. Yeah, um, I, this is, I love seeing this just because, you know, we go back and forth a lot in regards to the ownership versus the players. So here we have a situation where, you know, everybody is trying to work together to, to make this happen. This is not a situation where John Wall is demanding a trade and trying to force his way out. The situation where, all right, we have uh, Kevin Porter Jr. We drafted uh, Jalen Green this year. So our backcourt is set, you know, and with John Wall, I think he's good enough to still be a starter in this league. Um, and even, you know, it may have been nice to have him as a, as a veteran backup, but I'm pretty sure he wants another shot at, at starting. And when you look at it, you, I mean, do you really want to be paying $35, $40 million to a backup uh, point guard? So I understand it from Houston's uh, side as well. I like it where he lands. I don't know. Um, I mean, if he if he if he wants to if he wants to start, there's a couple of places I could see you know him at. But it's just a matter of if they could put a trade together because you do have to match that cap. 
Yeah, I think they're going to end up having to work on a buyout. It's just too much money left on the books. It'll be tough. I mean, you could find a partner for him, but it may not be a, cont a contender. Yes. He may be going to a lower level team that just wants him for the name and star power that he could still bring. But that's one of those we got to wait and see. Speaking of money, Aaron Gordon got a new uh, deal. He's staying in Denver. I uh, was a little shocked, but I, I also understood it. They, they want to stay young and athletic, and they want to give it a go for a full season with their young guys. I'm not sure where it really puts them in the West because I don't think this moves the needle much for them, but I understand why they did it. Okay, so my, my thing is, and I understand, and, and, and Eric, you know, you and I both are always uh, for the players getting to the bag. So I congratulate that, that, that young man on, on getting that, that type of money because, that's again, that's life-changing money. However, if I'm a Denver, if I'm, if I'm a, a member of the Denver Nuggets ownership, if I'm, on, if I'm the GM, I don't know if I, if I give them $92 million because we're talking about someone who's never averaged 15 points a game in his career. And I think a lot of the times this is where this is how the salary caps get all twisted up because you give guys that aren't really worth the contracts that you're giving them those contracts. So now you got to really OD when it comes down to the guys who are worth that contract. So, you know, things, things get kind of crazy. Then you get stuck with guys and you want to get rid of guys. So I was just, I just, you know, if, if, if I'm a Denver Nuggets ownership, I'm sorry, but I don't feel like he's done enough to warrant $92 million contract from me. I agree. I, and that's why I say I was a little shocked by it because, um, you know, Joker got his money. Jamal Murray got his money. The big question was, when would Michael Porter Jr. get his? So now Aaron Gordon gets that big contract. And you kind of wonder, like, all right, so is, does that mean Michael Porter Jr. might be the odd man out? Um, you know, well, are they have bird rights on him? So it could go over the cap. They whether no, or not they do that is you know right. They could definitely do that, and they still have time to figure it out. But for a small market team, they've always been one of those teams that never really wanted to go over the cap. They want to stay underneath because obviously they operate different than some of the bigger markets. Yes, I just again I find it odd. I don't think it moves the needle enough. And as much as we love guys getting the money, just from an organization standpoint, I don't see how this current roster as constructed closes the gap between you and the Lakers, you and Phoenix, you and Utah, even the Clippers. I think all those teams are better than you. And so running it back with the same squad to me doesn't make much sense. We, we saw the squad last year, minus Jamal Murray. They, it wasn't a championship caliber team. Yeah. So that, that's where I stand with. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants, Super Bowl champ, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk.